Cool. Cool. All right. Time to start building. Okay. So I'm going to get into it because this will be watched a little bit after it, I assume, by some people. But what we have in front of us is the Durafly Navy Seafire. This is something Steve had talked about uh, from Hobby King. Uh, the Durafly manager talked about it to me a little while ago. I actually had seen some, some pretty cool artwork early on. And uh, looking at some of the collection of graphic... I'm actually probably going to go with the... New Zealand, the Royal New, Ze New Zealand Air Force uh, with Kiwi on it because I think it looked pretty cool. Um, I love the Spitfires. I adore my Mark I to the point that I'm, I'm very leery of flying. So having something, having a Spitfire with the 4S set up now that I can fly uh, and, and go at it and just enjoy. Yeah. So without further ado, let's open up this box and see what's inside. Again, it comes with a, a normal outside uh, box. This one actually has been shipped to me just before Flight Fest. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't make it. Uh, but it obviously arrived in good shape inside a larger box. With um, They actually didn't have any foam bubble stuff in it this time. It was more cardboard, which is good for recycling. But mind you, the air packets, all they all break down really nicely. So... I do see the uh, the comments coming through. Good evening, everybody. Uh, and pop. I love the artwork. I don't know if it's something new that Durafly is doing, but some of these, uh, the, the you know, the, this is like, you know, a, a made-up aircraft, aircraft scheme anyhow, but I love the artwork. The last couple I've seen have been really nice, really good graphic work done. So kudos to the art direction. Uh, so there you go. There's the package. Not too bad, actually. And I see blue. Lots of blue. Everything is well wrapped and everything. Uh, on the plus side, the Mark I and the Mark Vs all use the same props. And I actually, that's one of the things I always do when I order stop is, you know, get extra props because I know I how I am on tri-blade props. I tend to destroy them. Um, so that's a plus. And I don't think the, the 109 is much different. So... You know, it's got a little insert piece into it. I'm just checking to see how the light looks here and everything. It's not too bad in here. A little, but my main key light's a little aggressive, but not bad. So it's nice having extra props, and it's nice that you have props that work across a range of aircraft. Excuse all that nice foam squeaks as I get rid of some of this cover. Now, these are the decal packages, some of the scoops. It looks like a radiator cowling. Yep. Uh, oh, that's such noise. Oh, 
fun. So decals, 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 decals. So this is why I like the Kiwi one. I think it's got a lot of neat attitude, but it's kind of cool. And then there's a bunch of other American ones. Uh, so yeah, I think my choice will probably still will be New Zealand. Who said this bird couldn't fly? It's kind of fun. And then all the other ones was Miss uh, Charlotte Marie, Christine Marie, and a couple other ones. So I think, yeah, you've got the uh, Fighting 103. You know, again, these are all fictional, but I think I'm going to go with the New Zealand colors because they look kind of different. And uh, we'll have some fun. All right. Decals out of the way. Let's keep opening this stuff up. Now, uh, this main one reveals the wings. Everything seems to have shipped cleanly. All right. Look at that. Nice set of Spitfire elliptical wings. A little bit of foam. Nice, good contrast actually on the um, on the two colors. You've got a, a lighter and then a darker, and you obviously got the white. So this plane should be really easy to track through the sky, even though it's blue. Um, I've never had an issue tracking any of my Corsairs. Uh, <laughs> how come we're not seeing? Yes, well, I took a bit of downtime. I was just asked here in the list why I hadn't been doing any updates, and I got severely busy with work. Uh, and then um, everything uh, everything before the pre-flight fest stuff really uh, just took a little bit of time. So I, I had to take, I pulled back a little bit. I've lost my knife in all this. That's funny. I don't know where I put my knife. That's hilarious. Ah, here it is. Uh, yeah, so I just got really busy. And uh, to be honest, uh, I did the Ohio trip, which was a good pause and then just went right back into work really hard and uh, really didn't have a lot of downtime didn't fly actually until flight fest so the a10 uh was one weekend where it was super hot and i didn't want to be outside um so i just got a little creative and built it so hey tim uh and uh so yeah there we go so kind of getting back into things kind of relaxed and just having some fun uh i'd hope that this aircraft could have come with me to Ohio, but obviously timing uh, didn't work out. Here's the main fuse. We'll pull that out right now. Let's see what we got. So uh, it's a beautiful Friday evening. I know I should probably be outside enjoying this fantastic weather, but I kind of want to fly this airplane tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> That's a nice aircraft with the LEDs and everything. I like I said, I was I, I was super excited to uh, to find out this one was available to me, um, just because I like flying the Spitfires and I enjoy my park zone, but I find it flies a little too scale. Uh, and a few times I've had it where it's dipped down, or if I'm trying to fly with someone else, do formation flying with an aircraft, another one. And uh, so I just said, you know what, I'm gonna enjoy this thing just purely for the reason that it's a little different and it is a beautiful flying Spitfire. So, okay, nothing else there. We have the elevator section to come out next, which is in the box really good. Oh, that's actually in there. Ah, here we go. Nice elevator. Oh, a little bit of damage from packaging. You'll see that there. That's all right. Uh, nothing too... Uh, too crazy. I think it might have been a heat related because there's anything shipping these days in this heat might be getting in there. It could have been jammed in there a little tight, but I'm not going to cry because the whole purpose behind this aircraft is to enjoy it. Every time I scuff the wings on my, my Mark 1, I'm like, ah. So standard kit. Uh, everything's well labeled in the bags. Kudos Durafly for uh, really stepping up to do that because sometimes the pain. A bunch of other accessories, your exhaust and everything. I will put the accessories on this aircraft. Try not to knock them off. And your spinner and that. So there we go. We have an empty box. Let's get rid of this stuff. Clear the bench and just start building. I, uh, of course, will be flying FR Sky. So I have a, a nice seven-channel receiver, non-telemetry. 
because it's a pretty simple plane. Why make it more complicated than you have to? And really, the build on this thing is so easy and so simple that you just kind of go along and enjoy it. So there's the underside. I'm not even going to deploy the landing gear or nothing. We're just going to start for the back. I'll probably put the elevator on first and just work my way through. Uh, I'll probably avoid gluing the scale stuff on screen because you have to sit there. I use foam tack and you end up having to sit there. Just wait, 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 wait. So we'll get the main assembly done and work our way through there. So first piece is the tail section. Now I probably will need to download that manual so I can figure out what tools and what screws go where. Um, but it's like four screws into the fuse, one into the back, and then that's about it really. So all the control surfaces. Uh, if anything, I probably should put my decals down right away. That way we can go. And if they're anything like the Spitfire, they're a little bit of a heat transfer. So I'll have to make sure I have my iron. I didn't really pull that out. Yeah. Here are my wing screws, I suspect. And I think the little ones here are probably the tail screws. So I will grab the manual to be sure. And then a bunch of snap fitting uh, for the wings, uh, the control surfaces. So if it's a case of I've got to do the um, the decals, I might as well get in there right now, grab a cloth, grab my iron, and stick those bad boys on. So give me a second while I go and I download the manual. That's uh, something new for Durafly this year. Uh, Hobby King Durafly. Spitfire. Yeah, so saying the manuals now are all downloadable from Hobby King. Uh, so there we go. It's funny, I did the search and the photo of me setting up is already there. <laughs> I had a few little whoopses trying to get the uh, files going. Okay, file upload, C Fire, manual, downloading. And I keep all my manuals. I put them into a folder here on my laptop and then I always have them. It's just all right. See fire manual. That's yeah, funny. The pictures are of all the other Spitfires, but the C. And that's the the Mark V with the uh, European theater, then the desert. That's cute. Well, makes sense. Why why reproduce something? So they go on and they say in their manual, they assemble it, and then when did they apply the decals? Well, I'm going to apply the decals. So I'm going to pull out my iron and a cloth. And that's how I do mine. And we'll build from there. Your Mark V comes with two scale decals. Choose before you begin assembly the model. Refer to the decal application on pages 19, 15 through 19. So there you go. I wasn't crazy. There's experience with this one. All right. Decal. Clear is in the front. Da, 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 da. Wow. All right. I think my iron is in here somewhere. Ah, here we go. My trusty hanger nine iron. Sand. And a piece of cloth. This is how I true prefer to do it. Uh, I tried the whole booty thing, and I ended up kept knocking it off. So it's just way easier to uh, go that way. Okay. And do they have a picture? Do they have... This is why the box art is great for referencing. They tell me all I need to know as far as where the decals go. Um, so should not take long to apply these. I don't know how scale a lot of you guys go. I tried a lot of the scale detail graphics on my Mark One, 
and I think on the uh, P40. And I found after a while I was just doing too much ironing, too, applying too much uh, heat to the overall aircraft and ruining the, uh, the finish. So I tend to not put too much. Close that down, close that down. All right. So the wing and the fuse. Okay, so I want this guy. All right, I'm going to need these. Pull these off here. 78. And then I will need these guys right here. So a couple of them are a little wrinkled up. So I'm going to put them on another bench and see if I can apply some weight to them and flatten them out. tablet. That ah, should be fine. Okay, so 7878 decal, decal. Got a little nose art with that guy. So as soon as I get the Iron up enough, we'll put them on. And then I'm going to, it's the yellow 78, actually. I'm looking at the graphics. There is a US one that has 78 or seven, uh, and they flip back and forth, which is kind of interesting. All right, and then these guys have got it. So there's a main set, they're gonna go on the wings, and then a the main set are gonna go on the top and bottom of the fuselage and so on, so pretty cool. And then, the smaller decals. So I'm going to use these two guys here. And I think those go on the wings. I think they're all the same size. Nope, there's a smaller set. And I'm going to assume those go on the uh, fuse. So I think they're all the same size, which makes it really easy. Now, those ones are smaller. Uh, these are all together. These are a single piece. There you go. These two here are single piece. So those are my fuselage. And then Lloyd P.A. Freeman is the pilot. So whatever. But uh, those will go on. So I will do the fuselage first. Put a little, a little, little guy on. So as soon as I get enough heat on my iron, I'll start my transfers. And, and with these graphics, and I think I've said this before uh, with my Spitfire video, just... Take your time with it with the Mark One. Take your time. Um, I have a towel over here which I'm going to put the plane onto. Done my ruler. And really, it's one of those just relax, and enjoy the whole process. It will go pretty easy. Um, I used to be super intimidated by it, but after I did those two ME109s, uh, which I've not flown yet. Um, it got easier. So, airplane down, and they show in the graphic the little little guy sitting here, and he looks like he is just about. He's just under the motor stacks, over top of the wavy line. Again, there is no right or wrong. Uh, you will be, want to be aware of where the wing sits in relation to this. And how he fits, because that graphic is actually pretty darn big. Hmm. It's got an exhaust stack. Where's one of my exhaust stacks? That sits there. Come back here.
So you peel them off, you position them. So I'm going to actually put them a little sideways, and that should work out really nicely. Just working this graphic in real casually, getting out all the air bubbles, making sure all the little details, there's a lot of little lines they're illustrating the, the bird flying around. So I'm just slowly, slowly rubbing it in with my thumb. And then I'll start working the iron in so I can remove the transfer layer. Take your time, absolutely take your time. Roll these graphics off little by little, especially this one, which has got some crazy detail. And the graphics, the uh, everything will seat down really nicely. Just take your time. Use my nail, top of my nail, and then if you have to grab the graph, the piece of the decal and pull it back, it's always these lifting little edges, and they tend to just pop down. What you don't want to do is release it too quickly because it could fold over on itself and then lift and make a mess of the paint and just really go slow. Nice. Minimal carnage. I think I lost a little tiny bit off his nose there. Not too bad. Okay. Pull that over. Get rid of it so it doesn't stick to anything else. My iron is at medium heat. And again, you use this light application. Come back and check it. Not too, too, too much heat is needed. And this cloth helps to make sure you don't bubble anything over. There we go. My kiwi is started. Okay. So next are these back fuse decals, number 78. And they, looking at the photos, sit just over top of the rear hatchback here. Actually, there's no hatchback here in the details, but just forward of this uh, vertical rib along the back of it. So there we go. Um, yep, I can use this as a reference line and I can use this as a reference line and just run it all along here. So. I'm going to take which side the decal was on. The decal goes towards the front. So this would be this one here. Peel that off and access that. Poof. Try to avoid not sticking anything everywhere. 
and then pick your reference points. So if this line is as straight as they say it is, I'm going to use it as my reference line. And I'm going to use that on the bottom of the rondelle and line up with that. Presto. My corner is intersecting. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I laid down my corner of the plastic, the, the decal, right on that line. And then smooth it all out. Got a little air bubble in there, but I'll be able to push that out with my finger nicely. There we go. Okay, now you very gently pick a corner as I, as I did the other graphic. And just very, 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 very gently pull these back. Okay, so far so good on the rondelle. The numbers will be next challenge. Okay. Ooh. So that I will pull from one corner. Get my finger in there. Try and avoid getting too much of this graphic on me. Push that down. A little extra. Whoops, whoops, whoops. You saw the seven jump. Good release on the eight. Then we'll come back. Let that come down. There we go. Cool. It's pretty painless. All right, a little bit of heat. I do like the white cloth because on most aircraft you can see through and you can see where you're working. And then, uh, unlike the boot, you actually uh, you don't run the risk of touching anything extra. So, I don't think it takes a whole lot to lock them down. It is something you want to watch in heat, on really warm days flying. I've had a few of them lift up, and so you just simply come back and reapply a little heat, and they seem to sit down nicely. There we go. Whoops. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Let's see if I can repeat that success on the other side. Again, I pulled the graphic off and I used the, uh, the plastic itself as a reference. So I'm going to try and get the, uh, let's see the center of my rondelle is pretty well over top of this seam detail line. So I'm going to aim for that as well. You also have to watch out for the uh, controls. So, so along that bottom rib and with the rondelle lined up right there. That's the plan. That did not pull off. We'll try it from this corner. He didn't want to release. Something to watch for. Come on, release. Oh, that one's this one's this sheet's being a little stubborn. That's annoying. Hold on. Right from another corner. There we go. Got some lift. Going really close. Careful on the rondelles because you don't want to rip them. 
And now will the numbers come up? Okay, there's seven. No, sorry, eight. And seven is tracking. Yahoo. Well, I have to say the first time <laughs> when I did the P40 for the first time, I was terrified of this process. Uh, and I just got used to it and more comfortable with it. All right, so there's my scene line. I'm as old centered as I can tell with the uh, rondelle over that one, and I'm using that line as where I'm lying down the, the perimeter on the rondelle. Okay, everything sits down. Yoo-hoo! There we go. Nice. And I keep these other graphics. I'll reuse the I'll use the American stuff on some other aircraft. Maybe I'll do it up on my next A10. Make it sound, look really snazzy. I think I've got some teeth from my uh, from the P40 because I did that in the UK theme because I'm crazy that way. Oh, look at that. Nice. That went down really cleanly. All right. So now, start lifting. And you want to take your time lifting. These graphics aren't bad at all, but I've had ones where um, we really noticed on some of them on the... Um, uh, the 109 that it would pull as you're pulling the tape you're you're ripping off chunks of paint which is unfortunate but of course i just grabbed my silver marker and i made that a whole lot better made it look like wear and tear because it's a warbird Ooh, going a little quick there don't want to lift up don't want to pull stuff too aggressively okay so when i get to the numbers that's where it's all Great. Now, we'll see if we can wax this down. Curves have to stay. Okay. Oh, got a bit of a air bubble in that part. It's too bad. Yeah, can't be 100%, right? Okay, iron time. We'll see if we can get that little air bubble out. Don't think I want to pull that up, so I think I'm just going to leave it be. Apply a little bit of heat. Lock it in. So I won't worry about the names. The only thing other thing I'm going to do is the... Uh, the numbers on the wings so we just keep moving on and like i said i will glue all the uh, accessories off uh, onto the aircraft afterwards um just because it's like watching uh kettle boil right so there we go you know that's how that's done we'll get in there i'll really quickly apply the two other sets of graphics to the wings and this aircraft will be perfect for uh flying tomorrow hopefully it's not bad at all. And then on the side, there we go. Okay, so that's the fuse. All I would have left to do is put the name on the two spots over here and here, and then some other little tags around. But I'm not going to worry about those little details right now, for the, as I said, for the efficiency of the video. Okay, so here, wing decal and the other wing decal. And I'm going to presume... They sit on the top and the bottom of the wing, and that should go real quick. So we'll grab the wing, we'll do the top section, and we'll do the bottom section. It'll be all done, and it is easier to do this when the plane is disassembled. I'm just looking over the Hobby King pictures to get an idea where I should put these, um, just for my own sake. So, it looks like they could sit over top in between here, these two spur lines and zero up there. Okay, so we'll do the first one. 
Ooh, see that? I pulled too quick. Tore one, so maybe I'll put that on the bottom wing. I think these have sat in the heat a little bit, so I'm just experiencing some of those little nuances with them. So we'll try this guy over here. I just go super slow on the extraction. Corner, lift really slowly and even. And that should come off a lot better. Okay, so that's got a slit in. I don't know 100% why. Is that something on the bottom of the wing? Oop. Server port. Oh, it's for the servo hose. So that is a bottom one. Okay. So that is probably going to sit over here. It is slotted. So it's going to sit this way well there you go look at that someone was paying attention to detail and they designed this stuff so we're committing and it goes and it lines up right over the server hole nice okay so i'm going to use that as my reference and i'm going to try and get this thing as squared up as possible Definitely goes on this side. So there we go. So that's what I'm talking about. This graphic came out with a little slot and I'm lined it up. So I'm going to put this guy down right away and then I'm going to use it as a reference and find the other decal with the cutout. All right, this other one has it, so that's where it's going to go. Okay. I got a little bit of an air pocket there. I'll just cut rid of it. Perfect. All right. Now we try and lift. Peel that graphic back nice and slow. Again, not exactly the speediest build. go nice okay that is nice and secure so then we'll pull off number two Hey, Tri-Blade. Uh, and we'll uh, pull off number the next graphic with the slot, and we'll make it match that one. And it'll look perfect, and no one will know the difference. So I'm just accessing the sheet. You can see the cutout right there.
transfer sheets are nice and big actually so it's it's not too bad of a task there we go okay and cool all right we'll put this one aside whoops So pointing out, we will line it up. I use the servo line actually for this is a light. I use that wire as uh, my fixed point for this stuff. And that seemed to work out pretty good. And then this guy, bottom edge touches down right in the corner. It's going to be off slightly with this guy. There we go. Nice. A little bit of an air bubble there to push out. That looks pretty cool, pretty even. That one sits a little higher point wise because uh, I had to make room for the servos because I'm not going to foul my servos obviously uh, but uh, I don't think it's a problem so one thing I do like to be careful with uh, because I noticed on my first one of these first ones is I had a lot of divots where my nail was pulling up the graphic if it sat down too much transfer this one's okay Again, grab a corner very slowly leave, pull it up, applying pressure where you need to, to keep it flush, and watch out when you start pulling on the bigger pieces. Fewer pockets. All right, bottom half wing graphics are done. I'm gonna do the top two, and then uh, I'll start in on the wings and work all the flap control surfaces and the aileron control surfaces, test the landing gear, and then it's put the elevator on this thing and set it all together, and it's done uh, outside of the, uh, the other pieces that we talked about, the uh, scale details, okay. So I had said earlier on that I was just going to place these guys between the two uh, panel lines above the, uh, the, uh, the ailerons, and that should do the trick. Now this guy I had to be real careful with because I tugged. All right, there, it came up. Good. All right. So I'm going to use this middle bar here as my uh, anchor point and put that in the middle. I've got these two lines here. I think I'm going to use that one reference line. Aha! There's a spot I can use. There we go. Nice. 
So there's this little H or four section. That worked out really well. It keeps it above the aileron. That looks pretty darn cool. A few air pockets to push out. Okay. So I'll lift up the corner. Get my finger under there. We go. Very gently. Again, I've said, take your time. They turn out nice. You don't do a whole lot of uh, damage to the paint. A decent graphic, actually. Any questions about Flight Fest, guys? They're all being quiet this evening. I suppose most of us should be outside enjoying the summer weather after you complained how bad the winter was. But, like I said, I want to fly this thing tomorrow. There we go. One more to go. You can tell, I can see my iron starting to pick up a little too much temperature. So I'm going to back it down just a bit. I got a little bit of alligatoring in one spot, so I don't want that too often. All right, last rondelle, and then we move on to setting up the wing. All the other graphic details can come on later on. Put this over here. All right, so let's see if I can find that wing pocket again and use that as my lineup. That looks like it's pretty well there, the same spot. Cool. <laughs> I want to fly tomorrow, but it's my wife's birthday. Yeah, that's a. Ooh. Oh, you gotta take one for the team, man. You gotta, gotta be pro wife on this one, dude. <laughs> Sorry, Louise. Uh, which plane is my favorite? I I'm a I'm a huge Spitfire fan. Um, I love. I've always loved Spitfires, so uh, I have no issue collecting them. Um, but some, some planes, I just, I just love flying hard. Uh, but my absolute favorite had to be, um, there's two. The, when I first started off scratch building was the, uh, the FT racer designed by my buddy, David Vindestall. Um, and then obviously the arrow played a huge part of me getting interested in in FPV flying, because um, that one just kind of relaxed things and made it really simple. So, I'm hoping my EDF experience goes well. I seem to have collected a few, and I'm looking forward to start flying EDFs again. Last year, I got into it for a little bit. Um, uh, I have not flown any of the new ones yet, but that's uh, that goes that way. There'll be plenty of time coming in the next couple of weeks to get out flying in the afternoons and evenings when I get home from work. Uh, and then, of course, the high wings. Love my Tundra. 
that plane has done me done really well. Um, and it's one of those ones you 3S 2200, such a simple plane. So, all right, decals are done. So we're going to get out the servo tester and we're going to test all these guys and make sure they, all the components on this wing and make sure it all works. Set up the control linkages and then do the tail and then put the wing in and this airplane will be almost ready to go. So first order of business is to flex those aileron control surfaces. Okay, and nicely labeled from factory, aileron gear, that's your lights and your flaps. So this is essentially a six channel aircraft uh, and I will be running a seven or eight, probably seven or eight channel receiver. Um, all the ailerons and flaps are tied together with a Y connector, so no split, but this aircraft is, you know, you can fly this thing pretty well, bank and yank. You, <laughs> that rudder's pretty small, but it still will let you do stuff. So, all right, so servo tester. So I got my little UBEC. A... Uh, 3S1000, set my settings for 150, and then, that's not what I want, 150. There we go, centered. Actually, I will flip that over if I can, and then you'll be able to, yep, brand new Flight Fest, Ohio and Texas. Uh, the Ohio weekend was awesome, as you can tell. I'm a little raspy still, uh, but it was a, a fantastic weekend of flying and uh, hanging out with good buddies and dealing with all the stuff. We actually had really good weather. Okay, two of them sound good. So I'm going to flip this stuff all upside down. There we go. Okay, let me quickly refer to the manual, and we'll see where the control surfaces are hooked. All right, wing, 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 wing. All right, this is the wing, and it looks like the aileron controls go to the top hole. All right, so these are all different sizes. The longer ones, obviously, are the ones we're looking for. Now, nice. All right, okay. And when am I going to meet the Hawk? I got a feeling um, we're going to into a massive EDF meeting weekend. Uh, the Hawk's got to go up. Um, the um, Yak 130's got to go up. Uh, the F5 eventually has to go up. And of course, the Flex Jet will eventually have to go up. So it's going to probably be a massive EDF weekend. Uh, I'm going to start off slow and just work my way to each and every aircraft one by one. But again, the Hawk will probably be the first one. Um, I've been a little bad, but I've also decided that I wasn't going to let the maiden stress me out. Uh, it was just, you know, timing and everything. So, okay. Notice the LEDs are on both sides. So that's pretty cool. I'm just stretching these guys out to uh, meet my needs. Still needs a little stretching. Not much. Well, still a little bit more. That feels pretty good. Maybe one more turn. 
So I'm using the top hole, which it looks like is what's recommended in the manual. And then this one on. There you go, that's one, one down. And this, so I've used tools on these before and I've just learned that ah, you end up doing more damage than anything else. Especially on the plastic, so go very gentle. Find it just deforms the plastic. Another option is to slide it on, but I've never had success with that. Plastic pod goes on the bottom. I've seen people put them towards the tip of the wing uh, and use them as wing protectors. Oh, yeah, these guys. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny because I didn't know what they were for the um, the 109, and Steve was laughing at me. But, yeah, it's a nice little way to prevent some of the uh, wingtip uh, scratches because, you know, we all scrub a wingtip here and there. All right. There's one. Aileron control. Great tip, Brian. Thank you. Okay, so try and get these guys equal. And I probably will apply the tips on them, actually, Brian, since this plane is going to be flown and flown often. I've got a feeling that uh, it will see a lot of usage. Let's see how equal those are. Uh, those are pretty close. I've got a little bit of down on them compared to the fuselage, which I'm okay with, actually. It's just a little tiny bit. So... Let me come back and tweak those after. But for now, that is good enough to get us into business. Some of these connectors. There we go. Just use your hand. Take your time. Apply a little pressure. I've snapped. I think it was the elevator on my Mark I just from being too aggressive and uh, decided that I would just take my time after that because I used some wood to repair it and everything and wasn't happy with it's not bad. I can come back and fiddle with those after the video, which, you know, we know everybody has to do a little tweaking in the field. This one. Come on. Get up. Okay, that one's on. We'll do a little control test here. Noticing the graphic is being lifted on this side over here. So that's something to keep an eye on. It's the blue tape. Okay, next, flaps. I've set my uh, servo controller to 220, so that should be closed, and then nice split flaps. Actually, we're going to 150 for now. And we'll pull back. Actually, no, I have to go back to 220.
great. And do that. Nice. That works. Great. 150. The retainer. Where'd that go to? Where did the second one? My retainer. Yeah. Uh -oh. What would I do with those? I have to go hunting. Get around here somewhere. Oops. Come on, clip in there. There we go. Don't squeeze too tight. You end up deforming the plastic. So there we go. Just looking for the pop. All right. Now, where did I put the other retainer clip? I didn't count and make sure I had them all. I assume. Oh, no, that's a piece of foam. Um, come on, come on. Hmm. I may have to pillage from my spares somewhere. Anyhow, you know, it'll show up. This guy's got it extended a tiny bit. Two, three. Nope. Okay. Extend that guy just a bit. Just getting the flat piece done. That sits down nice. Okay, great. I'm just looking for the little white cap if I've lost it somewhere. Could have been shy in the package, but I didn't think so. I thought I had extras, so who knows? Maybe wrapped up inside the blanket. I can come back to that after and put that on. Point being, we don't have. Great stuff. Cool. Next test will be the landing gear. Oh, 
No, that's funny. I don't think I've lost a part in a long time. That's out of little tiny screws. Oh, well, we'll find one. I've always got spears. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Landing gear set down to 70. Grab the wire. Success. Good stuff. Landing gear works. Great. Non spring, normal. Not too bad, actually. Don't seem to bind up or anything, so pretty good. Okay. Let's get the uh, hot iron out of the way. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> and now we put stuff together. The um, tail is super simple as well. Again, 4S. Uh, I run this thing on 4S. I've tried them on 3. didn't really do anything for me. So I've done 4S and uh, enjoyed them. All right, elevator time. Again, flexi flex. Control linkage is there. So I think there's some debris in here. So I'm gonna get my getting it. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, great, got that out. Just some debris where the uh, post came in. Slide that out. Two pieces up. Slide them all the way in really carefully. Okay. Look from underneath to see how their alignment looks. I can probably go. Close. Good. All right. So let me find out what screw was in the tail. And then I can get in there and check all the other servos inside the aircraft. Okay. So slide them in. B is 2.3 by, by 6 millimeters. Uh, 2.3 by 6 millimeters, which is this guy here. And then the other one is the anchor screw, which goes in to control the link the two halves. All right, two little screws, put the bag away. Screwdriver. Eh, like this. If anybody knows how to use the screwdriver properly, let me know. It's an old joke. Okay, so the holes are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 
and I'm going to try and anchor this stuff down really cleanly. There you go. And then the little 1.7 goes in at the very top, right in here, and that links the um, links the two halves of the elevator together. This is a really small screw. I might try a different driver, but we'll see how this one I have here does. So yeah, there is a little bit of cosmetic damage from, from the packaging, but it doesn't seem too bad. That might not be seated in. No, I'm going to work with that a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to release these guys a bit, a little bit pressure while I fiddle with that, and then I'll come back and redo that. Okay. So it might have been better to do the back half first. Let's see if I can get the screw in there and that'll capture it and then work it from there. A really tiny screw. I'll go worth backing these out just even a little bit more. Yeah, that works. Okay. This part's fiddly, I'm noticing. Try Blades asked me if I've seen the store. I said, yes, I have seen it. Um, I knew about this a little while ago. Uh, seems to be the growing theme lately. Um, uh, I think talking to the guys, uh, logistically, it's a really good way. Um, I think from a customer standpoint, you're not going to see much more of a change. You'll still be able to acquire all your, you know, your normal flight test uh, uh, elements and uh, you get the benefits of a faster distribution center um, so that's that's from their standpoint that was the biggest thing they took a lot of logistical needs away or our pressures from away from flight test by going this way so it's a pretty cool thing as far as i'm concerned um, you know, good on them i know austin has been working hard you know he he, he jumped out of best and went right back into the store uh, build up so there you go that screw went in and then all I have to do now is retighten these guys back here, the two tail pieces. Oops. And uh, for those inquiring, yes, Flight Fest Texas is next on our radar. So we'll start working on that one very soon. Okay. I'm going to center up the elevator. This is a power lead for all the lights. Cool. So we'll do the elevator first. Centered at 150. Okay. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right. Lay this guy on the side. Bring it back here, actually, off the bench and adjust the trim accordingly. Cool. Uh, this guy, I think. I think I might see. As I recall, I did damage to my previous tail 
getting the tool on so i think i want to put something underneath it and support it while i'm pressuring with my hand because that was really annoying breaking that off oh that is all right we'll try the balling tool Nope, not liking that at all. All right. One more time. Let's see if I can do that. I'm going to put a little piece of plastic underneath to help support the whole thing. And see if I can get that to sit down using my nail. There you go. A little piece of plastic underneath to see if we do the trick. So now I have an elevator and it is. I'll do a little trimming afterwards. Cool. Rudder is next. We're getting close to having a completed aircraft. Rudders on this side. Do a little adjustment on the tail gear. Center this guy up. That's pretty darn. Nope, that will need adjustment here. So I'll center up the landing gear, tail gear after. Nope, not quite yet. Keep on twisting. One, two. Nope, still a little bit more. Am I going down? Lefty Lucy. One, two. I get my finger in there. Three. Nope. Still got a little adjustment to do. Nice thing is I could come back in here and do a little finite adjustment. Oh, that's loose. That's probably what's going on. What are these guys? Do a little. The nuts are on there, I guess, but they look. I don't think I'm my finger in there, but we'll check those. Lots of play inside the servo uh, controls, so that's something to check out. I'm going to inspect those after I get this stuff all lined up. So that'll just add a whole lot of unnecessary issues. Okay, tail is centered. Ah, uh, gravy. A little too much pulling there. I unseated the, uh, the actual uh, part. Okay, I'll line that back up there with a the tool. I pulled the uh, control rod right out of the clevis. The, uh, okay, it's 
in. Just that screw up a little bit more. Come on, get through. <sighs> Silly. Made work for myself. How very wise. On the plus side, I'm flexing the, uh, the rudder really well. Come on. That's so funny. <laughs> okay, let's throw. Set this guy up and lock it in. And we're good to go. All right. That looks nice and centered. Landing gear looks nice and centered. Call. Mm. I could trim that just a tiny bit more. What do we got? There. Okay. Lock that guy down. There we go. Rear control surfaces are good evening off axes. There we go. We now have the Spitfire almost set up. The only thing I don't like, and I don't know if I can get a screwdriver in or a pair of wrench in there right now, is the uh, the bolts on the other end, so the nuts on the other end, feel loose on the servos. So I wonder if I unscrewed those and removed them. Oh, hey, Blake. Uh, if they will clean up, if I can get those to tighten down. I don't want to make too much extra work for myself. At the same time, I don't want to lose a control surface to sloppiness. Okay, that feels better. I think those will hold. Okay, so ESC wire. Disconnect that guy. Connect that guy. It's a little 3S battery. Plug that in. <laughs> there we go. That's ready. So, next part, we put putting this thing all together. Now, like I said, there are accessories to glue on, uh, but those are stuff I will glue offline because that's just accessories that don't make the plane fly. So, we're going to go in there, and we're going to set up the wings. Install the wings, everything. I'm going to grab my radio and the receiver. We'll make a new model. I suspect I will be able to use the previous Spitfire model that I have, the Mark I, and minimal trimming, but I'll probably just make a whole new model, to be honest. So, uh, Dale, uh, Blake asks, it looks like your shop is out of space with all these new planes. Yeah, going to have to do a, a purge eventually. Um, Kind of, uh, I think this is, I think the flex jet was my last big, was my last big purchase of the year. Uh, I really like it. And I'm really going to enjoy flying it. Um, and from there, I want to do more scratch builds because I've really enjoyed that A10 project. That was just a, it was a surprise to me how well it went and surprised how well it was worked out. So we'll get it back up and running. We'll get V2 going and uh, have a good time. 
Okay, power. I don't know if I've bound this radio yet to my transmitter. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. Create a model. All right, channel three for the motor. Great. Channel uh, one channel for the ailerons. Okay. We're going to move you down to channel one. Okay. Page. No flaps. Uh, yes, it does. It has one fl it has flaps on one channel. We'll put those onto channel five. Does it have air brakes? No. Uh, we have a rudder and elevator, so we're going to assign those channels. So rudder is on channel four. Elevator is on channel two. Nope. Let's fix that. I'm going to move on that, but I'll fix that. All right. And then name it. Page. D. F for Durafly space. Sea fire. It's really a lot easier to do this on a laptop. You ever wonder why the buttons go out on a Tyrannus, huh? Okay, don't worry about the timer. We can program up the radio here in a minute. Gonna see if I've bound this thing once before already. Nope. So I'm gonna do the bind pro protocol. Do that here in a second. I'm gonna fix something before I go in there. So rudder channel five was flaps. For whatever reason, it did not do it. Oops. Arr. So for me, I use uh, my radio, obviously. That's my kill switch. Then my C. This one here is my flaps. These are my rates. And these are my gears. Pretty simple. Just one more, and that's the gear. I don't know why I did Well, no, what had happened was I clicked through my menu on the radio when I was doing the build setup, and I accidentally put the <laughs> rudder and the, uh, the throttle on channel three together. So that was all. Whoops. All right. G for gear. That's good enough for me. Beep, beep, beep. Great. And then make sure that's in here. Great. All right, so all I have to do now, grab my bind plug. Menu. Sorry for the noise. in there. Screwdriver. Hit the bind button and do this. Let's see, we did this. Come on, pull that out. Ah, buying plugs. That 
Ah, had it on the wrong port, of course. Okay, sorry, more noise. Let's do that. And we got a saw green light. Gold. So yeah, I, I like these, um, I like the V7s or the, R, the V8 R7s Mark IIs um, for a lot of these builds. I get my, I don't get telemetry, um, which is fine. Uh, a lot of these normal airplanes, but I do get, you know, the FR Sky protocols and, and the, uh, the redundancy and everything. So. so I tend to use them and they're significantly cheaper. So. Um, now I'm going to Velcro this bad boy in pretty well up, uh, up here. Well, I'll get the wing in and I'll, uh, and then I'll put the Velcro or the Velcro, the controls in, and we are that much closer to being done this build. Okay. And then I'll locate the radio and everything will be out of the way. There's a wire. I'm going to try and snag out the way so it doesn't get crimped. Okay, so laying the airplane upside down. Turn the radio off. Now, when you put this in, you actually, it's pretty neat because you get a nice little pop sound when the, when the connections are made. All my wires are clear. Yep. Pull them all through. Snag them and grab them. There we go. One, two, three. I think we've got them all. I think everything is clear. Okay. I'm going to push this down and into place. I don't think anything is interfering. I don't think anything is binding. Great. Oop. Don't push there. Looks good. Okay. Put it on the bench. Cool. It's down. Didn't get the pop like my last one, which is fine. Okay. Grab the last bag of screws. Good evening, Martin. Screws, here they are. Now when I do my screws, I tend to do uh, star pattern, get them all lined up and then pressure them down little by little from end to end, so an X pattern, I guess. Need a power driver. Good looking airplane, actually. I kind of like the uh, the color of the blue and the white. Should be pretty easy to track. I guess I'll have to go charge my 4S packs up the, before I go to bed. I run my Zippy Compacts in this aircraft. 4S Zippy Compact 2200s. I think they're 40 Cs. That seems to do well. We'll strip out the soft screws. Yeah, that's true.
<laughs> we have to build the technology. Thank you, Martin. Yes, we will definitely be rebuilding the A10, and I will do a little bit more in-depth work. Uh, I'm just thrilled that it worked. I'm thrilled that it flew. I think it looked pretty neat. Uh, I was impressed because, you know, it was a pretty boxy-looking airplane, and once you put some of the... Uh, design stuff into it it wasn't you know some of the sort of some just the cosmetic features it kind of came to life so it's okay i'm noticing a little bit of uh folded or crushed corners and stuff like that that's probably from shipping um everything else seems to seal up i would probably yeah i'm gonna keep torquing that i don't like that there's a little bit of a, a little bit of wiggle there so i'm gonna keep torquing in the screwdriver um I'll just lock it in. Nice. So you're a good, good bind. Okay. I don't think I'm going to get any tighter. And I don't want to push any harder because I don't want to crush anything. All right. Let's put a receiver in the airplane. And shove that down into the belly. All right. Ailerons, one. Elevator, two. Throttle on three. Rudder on four. Flaps on five. And I put gear on six for this airplane. Come on. So you could get away with a nice, simple six channel receiver. Uh, with zero issues with this one because they make a provision for the extra lights um, on the landing gear wire, which is what I'm about to attach. Uh, flip that over. Ground positive. Great. And then hook the gear in. All right. And then stow that receiver way in there. Shove it all the way out of the way. I'm going to cross over on some of the wires, so I'm going to be careful and try to make some room. It's a bulkhead there, so you got to... Ah, there we go. The antenna's inside, and that'll be fine. Hey, Bill, what's up? <laughs> Brian, it's a, it is a gorgeous airplane. Uh, like I said, if I hadn't picked up another Spitfire, uh, I would have, uh, if, sorry, if this one hadn't come on line, I probably would have had a Mark, a, uh, a different one already. I would, sorry, the, uh, I would have probably picked up a Mark V to supplement my Mark I because I do enjoy the colors so much. I'm just, right now, I'm just or orienting my antenna, my antennae, get them out of the way of the power. Uh, I think I'm going to tape one along here. Yes, tape. And then we'll plug it in, do full system checks, extend the gear, landing gear, Test a few other things, and I think we'll be close to being done on this master. What is that? Okay, it's away from. There go, nice, cool. And I'll find the CG. I'll tag that. All right, radio on, and I'll just. Welcome to Open DX. Good morning. Woo. Flap switch backwards. I'll tweak 
all that. Okay, so the next thing I do is reverse my flaps. So channel five. There you go. Flaps middle rates. Flaps half, flaps full. Nice. All right. Let's check our ailerons, see if the throws are correct. Right? Nope. So channel one gets reversed. Right, left, right, left. Beautiful. Elevator. Elevator needs to be reversed. Up. Nope. Up. Great. Down. Rudder. Eh. Good stuff. I had one out of Cool. So there we go. Not too bad. I will go in the put together all the extra supplementary stuff, glue on all the other ends, and uh, we pretty well have a Spitfire on our hands. Again, I will run it on 4S, 2200 Zippy Compacts. I gotta get my CG. I still gotta program all my rates, which I can probably steal from my other aircraft or just check the manual and program them in really quickly. But there you go. It's one of those beautiful looking airplanes. You take your time and uh, it will come together really well. Uh, I'm still gonna put in my throttle safe, obviously. Um, but yeah, I like it. I like the combination. I like the colors. I like the, 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 um, you know, the fact that, you know, no, the sea fire did not really exist in, in the war, but gorgeous uh, rollout of a nice color scheme, a nice idea. And why not? Why are we so bound to these, you know, this aircraft existed and this is how it's supposed to look and everything. Why not have a little bit of fun, um, and, and you know, explore, some other options and some other ideas. So, yeah, there we go. Um, I'll throw the prop on and put the spinner on so you can have a really good look at it. Uh, we'll take the battery out because I don't have my throttle safe plugged in yet, uh, programmed up. And then, like I said, it is drop in a bunch of uh, scale detail parts. But let's put that prop on, put the canopy on, our battery cover. Oh, spinner needs some bits. Probably have to balance that prop too before I fly it. And then, like I said, there are a bunch of other pieces, the rads and everything. So that'll do. I'll do a little foam tacking after this video. I've got to find that uh, the clip for the one flat so it doesn't come flying off and uh, you know ruin a really good day. Spinner screws. So this prop set is caged. Actually, that's kind of nice. I forgot about that. That is caged and designed. This guy here. Spin that on. Cage it. Put the prop on. This is nice. Because now you actually know that you've got the prop in properly this time versus previous. Uh, give me a good screwdriver. Not too big. There we go. Spinner. Okay. Hmm. Spinner does not want to go on. I wonder if the prop needs to be. Moved around a tiny bit. Well, I'm going to test. I'm going to dry fit this test. Let's see if this is. Okay, that's definitely related to the prop. So it's a positional thing. We'll just try it without. Okay, it does go on. All right. <laughs> Might fool the other planes around. Well, it's definitely gonna see a lot of flying action. What is going on?
It's the nut. Interesting problem. Hmm. So the nut and the spinner are having a disagreement. Let's see if we can encourage this to work. Well, so much for final builds, huh? It's gonna take me a couple more minutes to resolve this. So hang in tight, folks, and we'll be done shortly. Looks like this. Well, can't quite see why it's not sitting down, but well, no. So, what's going on is inside the spinner, it looks like the brass, the, the, the nut fitting here is uh, it's not seating cleanly. So, We have to do some shaving off the air later on. We'll just try it. See if we can get the seat down. If I can grab the uh, screw, I might be able to uh, just cage it on. No, nope, I guess I'll do some shaving. We'll do some modifying later on. So, okay, I'm going to wrap this video up because it's uh, approaching 10 o'clock and I have a few other things I have to do this evening in order to get flying. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, the Durafly Seafire again. What a fantastic idea. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm willing to bet this. Give me 30 seconds. I know exactly what the problem is, Martin. Put the proper on. Put put the prop on the right way, Russo. Never said I knew what I was doing. Wowzers. There you go. Look at that. Here, we'll stick these guys on just for uh, just for the sake of some looks. Woo! Beautiful looking airplane, folks. That thing is nice. Well, there you go. I'm Andre. And this is the Durafly Sea Fire from Hobby King. Uh, it is a 1100 millimeter aircraft, and uh, I, I think it looks phenomenal. Um, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun flying this. Again, I'll strap on the, all the scale details and uh, we'll get it ready to go. Look for a flight video later on this weekend. Fingers crossed if that all works out. I've gotta go charge some uh, 4S2200 batteries and uh, finish setting everything up, program the radio. But thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any comments, leave them. Um, it's a long build video, but why not? You know, now I'm not going to have to sit here and edit and you, you can fast forward through all my painstaking ironing process. So again, I'm Andre. Thank you for watching. Have a fantastic evening. Ciao.